the morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to the start of trading for the month of November. Hope everyone had a great Halloween weekend out there. The market's picking up right where we left off. Higher prices, a little bit of a pullback in the last about hour to two hours. We make a high in the S&Ps up at 46.19. We're still positive by about 10 points in the futures right now, trading at 46.06, but we've given up 13 points from the highs. You see the acceleration at 4 a.m.? Basically right back to where we were at about 4 a.m. Tech stocks, pretty similar action. Friday, we accelerate higher. So much for Amazon and Apple disappointing and bringing the market lower. Not quite the scenario. I mean, look where we started off yesterday, uh, excuse me, Friday, 15,600 early pre-market. We finished the day at 15,850, backing out the action. When we came into Apple and Amazon earnings, you were trading at 15,754. We're 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 above that price level. Dow up 100 points right now, 35,804. All the markets giving up some of the gains a bit over the last hour to two. Russell, 2302. Russell positive by seven points. Bitcoin, a little bit of volatility in both directions. You're technically negative 800 bucks, but you're trading above 62,000, 62,200. You got crude catching a continued bid. Thursday, we're approaching 80 bucks. Today, we're approaching $85, folks. 84.44 right now, up 85 cents in crude. Gold trading up $5. Gold traded lower on Friday. The dollar, excuse me, dollar had quite a move of strength on Friday. You had gold pulling back with that. Excuse me, with that move today, you're up five bucks gold. Clawed back almost all those losses we had on Friday morning. We got silver up nine pennies at 2404. And we got notes and bonds with a little bit of higher yield yet again. We're looking at a two year right now, a two year yield. We'll get into it in a moment. The highest yield we've seen since March of 2020. We're coming into a Fed meeting. They may start tapering those bond and asset purchases. Fed meeting begins tomorrow. We get an announcement at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Press conference 2.30 on Wednesday. We got jobs, non-farm payrolls Friday for the month of October. Lots happening along with earnings, of course, this week as well. All right, jumping back to the markets here. S&P's up seven points. We'll check out Amazon and Apple to kick things off. There's your acceleration on Thursday night for their earnings. Amazon, maybe that was a buy-in opportunity, folks. I mean, look where we were yesterday. I keep saying yesterday, Friday. Uh, you had a low of 32.73. You finish the day 100 bucks higher on Amazon shares, and uh, we're basically flat this morning, 33.75. You jump to Apple. I mean, clawed back a lot of it as well. Apple, all right, you want to you wanna hear something crazy. Apple finished Friday above where you finished out Wednesday. So, yeah, it looks like you had a lot of devastation on Thursday. But for these equities, all you really did was give back the gain you had Thursday coming into earnings. On Apple, you started the trading day at about 149 or 150. That's right where we are right now. Amazon, a little bit lower than where you started it, but you're only back to last Tuesday prices, folks. That's not what a what a harsh pullback looks like when you have earnings on Thursday. You miss to the tune of maybe 10 to 12 billion dollars for the current quarter. Amazon might not even make any money for the holiday season. Usually their biggest quarter out there. Remarkably, you get a company valued at 1.6 or 1.7 trillion dollars. That's not going to make any money. The whole point of companies is to make earnings, folks. Now, how much revenue you have, if you can't bring it to the bottom line, doesn't matter. That's not the case with Amazon. They will bring it to the bottom line, I think, in the long term, but they're not going to do it on this current holiday season, and that's usually their biggest. But I've talked about it before, and the way I look at it with Amazon, they're investing, bottom line, whether it's in human capital, whether it's in capital in terms of automation, delivery, process, they're investing in it. Uh, their, their competitors are going to have to be investing in it as well, and they have AWS on the side that's able to support that with the margins they have. I think AWS was growing at 39% for a $16 billion business for a quarter. Think about that. They're doing $16 billion in 90 days, and they're growing on a year-over-year -year basis at 39%, and that's an acceleration of growth. That's just mind-blowing when you look at it that way. Uh, Amazon trading at 33.75. Now, both of those companies were down dramatically on Friday. What you had is you had other companies picking up the slack. 
like Microsoft. Microsoft, look at Friday's action. You finished at 331.62. We're basically flat today. But man, Microsoft, I think you're up 1.7% on Friday alone after accelerating higher on their earnings. Microsoft, biggest company in the world as of Friday. You take a look at the Analyze Fundamentals tab, you scroll down. We're talking about a 2.488. About as close as you can get to $2.5 trillion. $2.48 trillion is Apple. Microsoft's going to be close on their heels. 2.47, 2.47 and 2.48. 2.468, technically, we'll round it up to 2.47. Uh, Apple, right on the heels of Microsoft as the most profitable, not profitable, biggest market capitalization companies out there. Uh, taking a look at some of the other FANG stocks for their market cap, you're talking about Google, right under 2 trillion, 1.97. Now, Amazon lagging a bit. You're at about 1.6 or 1.7 trillion, I believe. 1.7 uh, trillion for Amazon. Facebook pulling up their valuation just under a trillion now, 900 billion uh, as they've pulled back. Checking out the chart of Facebook. Facebook, interesting action last week going for uh, Meta, a complete rebranding. You were up to 384. You're down to 323. You know, the, the future might be Meta. It might. But stock prices do not like to wait five or 10 years for something to pay off that's going to be very, very capital intensive. And I would be real careful with this equity Facebook, even if you believe that the future is virtual reality, which it may be, folks. I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine that it won't be. Um, and the case that they are making in Facebook is, listen, you got to get there to where virtual reality is mind blowingly, amazingly real. Once you get there, it's going to be a shift, a generational shift that people will adopt it. And so Facebook, when you think about that, think about the capital it might take to get that perfect VR world. And that's what Zuckerberg is going to be going after because they have Oculus, which is pretty cool from what I hear, never used it, but they have Oculus right now. But part of their problem is only hardcore gamers are adopting Oculus because it's not quite VR. It's just kind of very cool gaming. When you get into VR where you can just do normal everyday stuff and feel like you're in virtual reality, which is what they're going for, that will be mind blowing. But if that's the level that they want to get to and they're going to be plowing as much money they can in over the next five to 10 years to get to that. I don't know what profit's going to look like at Facebook. Uh, they're going to be using those advertising dollars to put it into some big money. I think it's $12 billion, something like that a year at least. But I could see that number going up because uh, Zuckerberg's going to have a high bar. He's reading about this weekend. And I think he's right that they want to be first to market. And the, the person who's first to market with a VR system that actually feels like real life, imagine it seems like that might be a turnkey that would really uh, – change things in a big way, but talk about capital in a big way as well. So watch out for this one. Facebook, you're talking about giving back almost all the gains you had from March down to almost the 618. You're trading this morning up a couple bucks at about 325 for Facebook shares. All right, we got the S&Ps, folks. You want to see a cool chart? Just checking out beforehand. There's a nice three-year weekly on the S&P. I mean, this retracement doesn't even make sense, right? You started here last November, but that's barely a blip. You could almost say that we've been in a one-way trip from the lows of last March of 2174 to 4608. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. 
The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps positive by 11 right now, trading at 46.08. As I mentioned, quite a chart of the S&Ps up here, right? You put it on a weekly. My goodness. Not often, folks, that you can go from 21.74. What are we up? 130% from the lows. But even take where we were at the beginning of 2020, right? Take COVID lows out of it. You're trading from 3,200 to 4,600. You're talking about adding 1,400 S&P points over the period of just under two years uh, to 3,200. You're pushing 40% on a two-year basis, and that's taking out that full pullback, folks. That's taking it out, which is crazy. You want to go back three years, right? You're approaching 100% return from the beginning of 2019. You, I mean, ballparking 2,500, we're at 4,600. Uh, I bring it up because context is important. We've had almost no pullback in this run. Uh, yes, we had a pullback in September. Uh, it's gone. It's not even noticeable on this chart. The trend line almost stays intact to the upside, which is remarkable, especially you got a, a miss from Apple. You got a miss from Amazon. And the market takes it in stride and trades higher. And Microsoft talking about becoming the biggest company in the world. They take over the lead. They pick up the slack. And the markets trade higher. 46.08 right now. We'll see where we open for November trading. It's a new month. All right. With that in mind, we jump over to some of the headlines. We'll talk about the Fed first. So Fed meeting tomorrow. Announcement 2 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Press conference 2.30 on Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one as they may start to talk about pulling back on some of the $120 billion uh, on a monthly basis that they're making in assets, whether it's talking about uh, $120 billion in bond purchases out there, asset-backed securities. Um, now, what I want to get into, there's your S&P year-to-date. I've talked about just the run it's had. Uh, we get jobs numbers on Friday. Now, September's number came in at 194,000. I mean, look at this chart, folks. Do you remember, try and remember, when we were in January, February, March, April, right? The vaccines uh, get announced in November. They start becoming readily available in March and in April. Uh, the thought was you come into the summer, there's an explosion. We got 962,000 jobs in June. We got 1.1 in July. And then what do we get? 366,000 in August, 194,000 in September. Uh, they will be looking for 390,000 about jobs coming down the line on Friday for the month of October. Average expectation about earnings growth, 0.4%. That's an important one because we're dealing with inflation as well. Now, taking a look at the yield, and this is what I referenced here, okay? Now, I'm not sure who this gentleman uh, is. Shoemaker, who are we talking about here? 
Nonetheless, doesn't really matter because this is a straight fact that the two-year yield, okay, is up 30 basis points since the last Fed meeting five weeks ago. And that's a lot when you're only trading at 50 basis points, folks. You were coming into the last Fed meeting at almost 20 basis points, pointing to, as they put it here, I want to pull this up. Uh, the two-year yield, which most reflects the Fed, has risen more than 30 basis points since the last Fed meeting. You got to pay attention to this, folks, in a big way. Now, you jump over to whether it's the three-year, one-year, two-year. You're dealing with a 10-year right now of 1.6%. We've been well above that during the COVID pandemic the last year and a half. But the two-year, talking about shorter term, really rising. We're talking about 0.52% right now on the two-year. Something to pay attention to. It would be interesting to see what Chairman Powell has to say, whether it's Tuesday, whether they lay out the plan for tapering for the $120 billion in monthly bond purchases. How quickly are they going to do that? The expectation is to what? To do it over five to seven months, something like that, maybe eight months to pair it all back. But you're going to get those details, and the market may be getting a little bit ahead of that in a big way, and that's going to come down the line. And he's going to have to answer a little bit in terms of what happened to the September number, 194,000 jobs. Interesting that they're going to do that only two days ahead of another employment number for the month of October, and we'll see how that plays out. It's November already. With each number, you build the expectation a little bit. When you miss, you miss, you miss. All those expectations, folks, in terms of the last two months, the rhetoric has been, okay, the delay is a little bit longer than we thought, right? The extra unemployment benefits for those that felt like that was really holding the economy back, right? That was the reason why there were 10 million plus jobs open uh, at a time when we still weren't filling them with unemployed. Well, folks, that was September 6th that those benefits went away. We're coming up on two months later. They are not an impact anymore. All of the rhetoric that had to do with that, yes, it was a variable. How big of a variable was always the conversation. How big of a variable of an impact was it having? We still got 10 million plus jobs open, folks, and we still got eight or nine million jobs to make up to get back to the pre-pandemic levels. Looks like those numbers were not as meaningful as maybe people were feeling that they were. We're gonna get another number in November. What's gonna be the spin this time if we are not even adding, you know, 200,000 jobs on a monthly basis when we got millions to make up. We're going to find out on Friday, and Chairman Powell is going to be talking on Wednesday. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping down the line, let's jump to some oil. Oil rises on speculation. OPEC may spurn Biden's appeal on outbook. Not too surprising there, right? The appeal, I mean, what is the appeal of President Biden telling OPEC um, that they should be pumping more oil. Oh, uh, oil rising on speculation that they could spurn the mounting pressure to boost production at a faster clip, even as consumption was ahead of supply. I mean, yeah, the, you got a bunch of OPEC companies that would want to push out oil, but it's also not a bad deal, folks. I mean, there's a reason why monopolies are illegal, because you can all get together and price fix. They're illegal in America. OPEC is a monopoly. We just don't get to run um, monopoly laws across the globe, which is why they literally are a cartel that works together to fix their production and their pricing for the benefit of all of them. It's illegal in the U.S. if companies work like that because they affect pricing so much and it doesn't help consumers. Point being, there's a battle there. You know, their, their own product is skyrocketing in price. And yes, if they can push out more of that product at the same price, they'd love it. But you start pushing out more product and you drop the price level. Uh, they only have a certain amount of oil in perpetuity forever. Yes, that number might last years, if not decades, but they only have a certain amount of oil in the ground. They're not making more oil in the ground for these OPEC countries, and they kind of know that to a certain degree, which is why you see whether it's uh, Saudi Arabia um, trying to add different parts of their economy so that decades down the line, they have an area of the economy that will flourish post-oil. I don't see that moving much, folks. We're at $85 right now. And even if they do, okay, even if they do, OPEC supply is not to that market what it used to be. Uh, you have oil rising in a big way, and uh, it's not moving in a big way. Despite U.S. pressure, the cartel's preference is to go with a prudent approach, and that keeps the oil market tighter for now. Uh, yeah, and, and nonetheless, folks, we know how crude's going. And even as we've been talking, crude continuing higher. We're pushing 84.50 right now. We're up a buck 75, folks, from just where we were at 4 a.m. this morning on crude, let alone you take a look at this thing. It has been a one-way shot from August 19th. We're trading at 62 bucks. You're right now at 84.49.
let alone you go all the way back to 33 bucks. I mean, this this might have been the trade of the pandemic in terms of the lows of last April. That's when you had the April expiration contract going a negative, I recall, let alone you had oil, you know, really settling at the 20s, the low 20s for a while. I mean, look where we were. These are weekly charts. You were between 20 and $30 for crude for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, arguably nine weeks. You were between 20 and $30 for crude. You have a consolidation from June until vaccines become effective. The world opens back up. And now we all know it. we got supply chain issues. We got crude oil issues. And uh, we're going to open up the market when we get back in three minutes, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up 10 points, NASDAQ 100 up about 20, the Dow up 106. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're reacting right now. Uh, we're going to get Microsoft in there. Is that is that does an M belong in the FANG? Where does where does Microsoft, the biggest company out there right now, uh, down about two tenths percent, 330.94. We jump over to Amazon down two tenths as well. Apple shares down two tenths and Google 
flat right now. Facebook shares, remarkable. Facebook up another percent. You look at the volatility they had, whether it was Monday, they had their earnings last week to 344. You had the announcement of Meta on Thursday. You trade from 308 to 325, and we're sitting right above that price level right now at 326.53 for Facebook shares as the market opens up November trading. Uh, let's jump over to Bitcoin real quick. Bitcoin trading at 62,240. A couple interesting articles out here. First one, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Uh, they're the parent company. How about a $10 billion valuation with SoftBank and Google leading the investments there? Uh, remarkable when you look at the acceleration that this company has had. Now, what's interesting here is that they, the digital currency group is the parent company of several big names in the crypto space. Until now, its valuation was somewhat of a mystery as it had only raised $25 million in primary capital since launching six years ago. So they're going to public. They're raising $700 million uh, in a secondary round on Monday. First round was maybe that $25 million there. Uh, and that puts it at about $10 billion. One subsidiary, the one we're probably all most familiar with, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Uh, they're going to try and push that into an ETF, the world's biggest digital asset manager with $50 billion under management. Quite a price tag in a big way. Uh, now, we jump from that to this one, which is pretty interesting. Uh, reading about this morning, mystery of who invented Bitcoin hangs over scientist trial. Don't think that that's going to come out, but some of the numbers in here that they're talking about, are pretty staggering, folks, in a big way. Speculation over mythical Satoshi Nakamoto, right? Maybe the creator? Uh, not maybe, the creator of the identity, not sure. But no matter what you're talking about, you're talking about dueling claims over $65 billion in cryptocurrency, folks. Uh, and you're talking about 1.1 million Bitcoins. So what this has to do with uh, is that you have a computer scientist, Craig Wright. This is the gentleman up here pictured. Uh, Self-described inventor of Bitcoin. A lot of people don't think that's quite the case. Nonetheless, he is an early innovator and he's got a lot out there uh, in terms of the wealth that he's amassed. Uh, defending himself against claims that he swindled the estate of a deceased Florida man. Good old Florida, always in the press. Over $65 billion of the peer-to-peer -peer currency and intellectual property related to Bitcoin, excuse me, blockchain technology worth billions of dollars more. Uh, the brother of Dave Kleiman, who died in 2013, alleges that the late computer scientist collaborated with Wright on the early development of Bitcoins and the estate is entitled to half of the value of the cache of as many as 1.1 million Bitcoins. Uh, whether that stash can be recovered is by no means guaranteed. Uh, some prominent cryptocurrency entrepreneurs and investors regard Wright as fake, believe Satoshi's enduring an anonymity is part of the genius. Um, and he stood by his claim, but nonetheless, they talk about he's definitely an important early in innovator in crypto and also rich. Uh, beyond that, his claim is to be the main and our only author of the original Bitcoin uh, have little support. But man, you're talking about big time numbers in a big way. All right. Yeah, they got the YouTube chat going. We got anti-vaxxers in the YouTube chat, folks. Yeah, they're having quite a field day. It's very unfortunate, but we'll let them have their little field day. Uh, S&P's up 13 points, folks. NASDAQ, negative four. So what it has to do with, let's jump around to it. Um, Moderna, so they come out and they're going to hold off on children 5 to 11. It's really unfortunate in this day and age that you have uh, a company following the science and not releasing it until the science is solid. And no matter what comes out, folks, anti-vaxxers can seize on it. Uh, and even when a company is operating under the science, not pushing it out to the public until they're certain that it's safe, uh, they take that and run with it and they choose ignorance over facts and beliefs. So that's the bottom, bottom line for the three of you out there having a field day in the YouTube chat. Coca-Cola jumping back to the market, buying the rest of Body Armor for $5.6 billion, giving the soft drink giant full control of the sports drink band and more ammunition to take on the market leader Gatorade. Uh, that's the biggest acquisition. I had it up here, another one. I think they put it, uh, largest ever brand acquisition. So a company like Coca-Cola, biggest purchase ever is they're trying to get into that health segment giving the soft drink giant full control of the sports drink brand and more ammunition to take on the market leader Gatorade. So they already own 15% of it. They're buying the remainder from investor, including co-founder and chairman Mike Repoli, not familiar. Um, they're gonna remain in place. Coke on the other parts of the still beverage portfolio. That is quite a price tag. And these 
beverage companies. Now, Coke came out with great earnings uh, last week. From 54.50 up to 56.50 this morning, you're giving back some of that, maybe with the news that they're going to be spending some cash uh, to the tune of $5.6 billion. Coke down about a quarter percent on that acquisition news with the market giving it up a little bit too you're seeing a little bit of selling right now in the nasdaq 100 15,822 we're up to 15,914 pre-market there jumping around to commodities crude continuing pushing near 85 dollars and let's check out gold gold going to be interesting with we got fed action coming up gold 1789 right now that dive lower on friday had a lot to do with the dollar index accelerating higher in a big way all right, in terms of what else we have, we got a big week of earnings. Now, Roku is coming up on Wednesday. Taking a look at this one. I mean, talk about some volatility, right? Three-year weekly, you accelerate from the COVID lows. You make a high earlier this year. Talk about a double top, man. You make a high, was it 486.72? You climb just above that number to 490. Now, zooming in on this action, you got up there, you had earnings. You were talking about on a weekly basis, of 486.72 in July. We get up to 490.76. Now, it's interesting that we're coming into earnings this week at an area of support that we've had, whether it was in March, also that area of report back in, uh, support back in May. We touched this area briefly in late September, early October. You got all the way up to 350 in October. October, only two weeks ago, and you're back to 305. You're coming into those numbers. We jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about almost a $26 move priced into this equity. That's a lot of premium, folks. You want to sell some premium. That's a number that you like to see. The only disclaimer there is that they're not going to give you this type of premium, folks, if the volatility might be possible, which as you look at this chart, you better believe that volatility is possible when you're talking about almost a 200 point trading range, folks, from 300 to 500. We'll make it simple from 300 to 500. And we've done it twice in less than about nine, uh, excuse me, 10, 11 months from 490. We're down to 305. It is a nice area, though. You, you're back against the wall in terms of an area of nice support we've had twice we come into their numbers and i think it's wednesday november 3rd yes wednesday they'll be out with their numbers after the bell about a 26 dollar move priced in for roku let's check out how some of these fang stocks are opening up here as we have the nasdaq in negative territory amazon looks like uh wasn't all lost on friday we're trading lower 33.84 in terms of uh buying opportunities amazon lower by a full percent right now Microsoft down seven tenths percent right now. You have Apple down a half a percent. These yields might be hitting these tech stocks, folks. We jump over to the 10 year and we're rising yet again. You take a look at the 10 year. We're talking about down almost 10 ticks right now. And you're pushing 1.6 percent as we went over the two year at the highest yield we've seen in about a year and a half. It's Fed week. It's non farm payroll week. It's earnings. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of Harley Davidson, hog up here, hog up 8.88% right now. And that having to do with tariffs and a deal getting worked out to do away with those tariffs. So you got the US and the EU ending a dispute involving steel and aluminum. Uh, Harley could have paid European tariffs of 56% if the dispute had not been resolved. Now, Harley Davidson, you saw the chart when I had it up here at first, uh, really got ahead of itself to 52 bucks. You trade down to 35. Yeah, that's a bid, but man, watch out for this equity as a couple times this area of about forty dollars you go back to where we were in 2019 that was an area of resistance we topped out just above that level in early 2021 we're back at about 39.56 nonetheless a big day for harley davidson right now and as we pull it up uh yeah continuing to hold on to some of those gains what else we have in terms of equities moving spotify they get named a top pick from morgan stanley they were higher pre-market let's see if they're holding on to those gains yes they are extending them up about three percent right now uh travago is higher as well reported an unexpected profit better than expected revenue for the quarter they cited improving travel trends as pandemic restrictions ease and vaccinations increase trvg is their symbol there's a pop for you, up 10.6%. Let's see if Expedia's accelerating. Yeah, they're accelerating on that one as well. Expedia up 2.8%. Uh, Airbnb up 2.34%. Look at those moves, the travel stocks. Let's check out some of the airlines right now. Not quite the same. American dealing with some woes. Would they have to cancel like 1,700 flights over the weekend maybe? Are they in here? No, I don't think they are. Uh, but yeah, American having some woes in a big way. They're down about seven tenths percent. Let's check out the other ones. Yeah, Delta up seven tenths percent right now. United Airlines positive by about half a percent right now. We check out the cruise lines. Carnival up 1.2 percent right now. Norwegian up 1.56 percent right now. Those travel stocks getting a little bit of a boost uh, potentially on the Trivago news. Speaking of boost on news in terms of numbers, how about AMC? They had the highest theater admissions revenue in October since they've seen pre-pandemic, folks. AMC catching a bid up 2.2%. There's your three-year weekly. $72 was the crazy high. Uh, where this stock probably uh, rightfully belongs, that's anyone's guess, folks, in terms of fundamentally. If you take, you know, a valuation in terms of price to earnings, price to revenue, anything like that, $36 on this equity probably doesn't make sense as that puts this equity when you took out, talk about the fundamentals uh, of a $18.5 billion market cap company. But nonetheless, folks, it's a different world we're all in right now in terms of uh, the Reddit traders, the Wall Street bet traders, the meme traders, nonetheless, putting a bid in this thing and holding on to that bid. Let's jump around to GameStop since we're on it. I mean, who would have thought GameStop would have settled at 188 as we came into 2021, right? I think uh, we all had an idea that maybe GameStop was valued at 20 to $40. You pulled back after the first acceleration to about $38 and then just left it in, in the dust at 187 Let's check out Tesla. Speaking of stocks with accelerations, yeah, we'll just kick things off with new all-time highs. Tesla up another 1.7% today. You put it on a 15-minute. 
I mean, this stock, watch out, folks. What are we at now? You're talking about a company. We got to be pushing about $1.1, $1.138 trillion, just leaving one point trillion in the dust in a big way. Remarkable. Mr. Elon Musk, continuing. Uh, okay, yeah, the Barclays CEO is stepping down. Looks like there was an investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. He had done some business with him. Seems like more might come out of that. It seems like... Uh, he said he had regrets, but he hadn't talked to him in a while. It seems like that report says it was going to show nothing, and he still stepped down. It seems like there might be more coming out there. Yeah, how about Deer? So Deer reaches a tentative contract agreement with striking workers uh, with a vote on the six-year pack set for Tuesday. Higher raises and bonuses. I think it's a 10% number. Folks, keep your eye on this stuff. My dad sent me this article from the Bloomberg terminal, and there's your pop up 4% for John Deere. Yeah, I think it was a 10% wage increase, folks. You don't think there's inflation out there? If there's no inflation, companies aren't signing deals for six-year pact agreements for 10% wages. They just aren't doing it unless there's inflation, which there is. We'll leave it at that. Uh, speaking of GameStop, their COO is leaving uh, in just seven months. GameStop did not give a reason for the departure, uh, who had been a top executive at Amazon and Google. Just seven months, a COO. There's a lot going on in GameStop. Didn't they push out that last one, right? You got the guy who was formerly running Chewy. He's the head of the board now. Um, it's interesting you had that action. Didn't even realize that. And GameStop up 2.6%. Seems like anybody that gets pushed out, the Reddit traders just love it on GameStop because that means that their chairman is running the show and that's what they want in front of that uh, as well. And CrowdStrike, yeah, down about 2.3%. They get a downgrade at BTIG to neutral from buy. The firm points out increasing competition as well as the prospects for slowing growth. We pull up CrowdStrike. CRWD is their symbol down about 3.3% right now. We take a look at the daily. This thing's been on quite a trend. From the COVID lows of $31, talk about internet security of any kind, 272 bucks right now for CrowdStrike. Now, Roku, what was the one? Is this the one that spiked? Uh, no, what was I looking at? One of them had a big spike in terms of where we were on Friday. Was it Airbnb? No, Airbnb up 2.5% right now. We get the S&Ps up 6%. Markets giving back some of the gains. NASDAQ negative 13. Pretty mute market. Dow up 126. With everything going on, a pretty mute market indeed. We're going to get Fed. I mean, this market's going to probably inch towards waiting for Chairman Powell on Wednesday. We do have a bunch of companies out with their numbers. Um, going down the list, I mean, almost too many to name for sure. When we take a look at where we are, some of the companies that jump out in terms of what we have. We talked about Roku on Wednesday. Uh, scrolling down the list a little bit in terms of the headline numbers, we get Expedia on Thursday. So we just saw Trivago with their numbers. Expedia will be on Thursday. I believe we get Moderna and Pfizer this week as well. As well. Let's check out Moderna. I think they're out with their numbers. Now they're down 6.6% today, probably having to do with coming out with the science, and we're going to not proceed with children at this point from Moderna. Pfizer was the one that did already receive approval um, for vaccines for kids ages 5 to 11. Looks like they're, com they're coming down the line in about probably two to three weeks for that age group. Now, Moderna is going to be out with their numbers, yes, on Thursday. And Pfizer, to pull it up, going to be out with their numbers on Tuesday. So Pfizer, about a $2 move expected. Moderna is going to be funky right now with everything going on. $21 move they're pricing in. Let's just pull up the simulated trades. Uh, for the weekly options, about a $27 move priced in on either direction. I'm talking about a good 8 or 9% for Moderna. And Pfizer shares, which are basically flat to down slightly today as well, talking about uh, about a 5% move for Pfizer with their numbers. But Darren, are much more prone to what's going on, especially if they're dealing with some problems pushing out that vaccine for the efficacy and safety for the kids out there. All right, what else we got in terms of numbers coming out? Yeah, scrolling down the list, trying to pick out some big names that we had down here. Yeah, you got Papa John's coming out on Thursday. You got Wayfair out on Thursday as well. Let's pull up that one. Wayfair. Talking about a $24 move. So check this out. More than a 10% implied volatility move, folks, for Wayfair. Wayfair basically flat today. This thing's been consolidating for a while. Between about 250 and 350 about. Taking a look for the earnings. And yeah, they are out on Thursday. Wayfair. 
you're going to be selling some premium, folks, it's nice to be a, see a 10% move priced into their numbers. Um, but take a look at this equity in terms of the times that they're coming out with their earnings. We get some big moves sometime. Wayfair out with their numbers on Thursday. And with that, we got the S&Ps back to flat right now. Quite a market, folks. 4,600. Fed week, non-farm payroll week. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Got to try to Qualcomm up here. Qualcomm out with their numbers as well. They'll be out with their numbers on Wednesday, $133 stock. You're talking about a $7 move for pro, pro, pro the earnings on Wednesday. And uh, taking a look, a little bit of a tough year for Qualcomm. We're up to 167 back in January. We've been chopping around between about 120 and $150. For the ship just back in the early August, we're trading at 133 on Qualcomm. Checking out Netflix. Netflix shares this morning were down about half a percent and quite a run for Netflix, up to almost 690.97. We closed out Netflix, folks, at basically the highs last week. 690 on the dot. Remarkable action uh, when you look at where we closed out the week in terms of Netflix. We're trading right now down about half a percent. I bring them up because it's a perfect bridge to crypto. Squid Game is a meme coin. It's a meme coin warning with a wipeout after a 230,000% gain. Whew. Did you hear that one, folks? Uh, for all the Dogecoins and the Shiba Inus out there, folks, buyer beware, okay? I saw the articles about this on Friday. 
talking about Squid Coin, Squid Game, which I enjoy the series on Netflix, uh, is a meme coin. It's up 2,500%, something like that, since launching. Well, check out that chart, folks. Can you see? Can you see the rise and fall? Squid Game to U.S. dollar chart. You were up to 2,800. You're down to 0 0.012. That can happen with any of these um, coins. It can happen with any of them. It could even happen with Ethereum. It could happen with Bitcoin. You better believe it can happen to Dogecoin or Shiba Inu, folks. You know, just be aware because there's nothing to say that that market might go to zero because really they're only worth what somebody else will pay for it. Uh, they're kind of a game of hot potato for billions of dollars, which is what my friends and I talk about. The market sometime, even the GameStop, stock, GameStop stocks, uh, the Reddit stocks, the meme stocks, it's become a hot potato game for billions of dollars. Just don't get caught the last one holding the cookie jar that's empty uh and there's an example for you in a big way and we'll finish it up with you want to talk about interest rates when we got a fed week going on economists in brazil how about above 10 percent by the end of 2022 as they're dealing with some woes in brazil maybe think of uh our man teddy kegstat from forex trading unlock.com talking about maybe a little bit of a currency war going on brazil 10 percent thanks so much for starting the day with me folks stay tuned folks basil up next larry Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, all this afternoon. Have a great Monday, everybody.